ensimmäinen puhuja tulee Tanskasta. Hän on Stiipa Lau ja hän puhuu näistä YK-sopimuksen esteettömyysvelvoitteista. Mitä YK-sopimus pitää sisällä esteettömyyden suhteen? Ja hän on YK suomalaisten oikeuksien komitean jäsen. Uh, you are very, very warm and well welcome, Stig, here to our, our seminar. And now it's your turn. The floor is yours. Here you are. Yes. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? <coughs> and can you understand me? Yes. Could switch into Danish. <laughs> but uh, thank you for inviting me to this event. I think I will start just by introducing myself because I'm not sure if I was introduced before. I heard some words and I heard my name, but I'm not sure what what was actually said. It's strange to be in a Scandinavian country and not understanding anything. But, uh, but, but about myself, I am, as I was introduced, one of the independent members of the UNCRPD committee. And uh, this means that I'm elected by the International Society as one of 18 members who are watching how the development is going around the globe regarding the implementation of the UN CRPD, the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. But before that, I have been the chairperson of the Danish Umbrella Organization, Disabled People's Organization of Denmark, which was an organization that was established in 1934. And I was the chairperson for 14 years. I just stepped down this 1st September because I wanted to do something else. And before that, I, was a spine, I had a spine cord injury in 1973, <coughs> I think it was even before Kifu was born. Not quite. <laughs> Almost. Almost. But I have a substantial knowledge about all the subjects that you are going to discuss today, so if you need any advice, you can just ask. But I will go into my presentation, which is about the accessibility obligations, which you will find in the UNCRPD, and what is the what is required from the State Party of Finland in relation to the implementation of the UNCRPD, based on what we have been doing in the committee. And I will start by saying that I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I'm not speaking on behalf of the committee, because in the committee we are, <coughs> how should you say, we, we are always working, trying to get consensus regarding our, what we say. And that does not mean necessarily that we always agree on all details. But it is important that the committee is united around the concluding observations, around the guidance to the state parties. But there, we haven't been around all issues yet. First of all, I will go in and talk a little bit about how, how much focus we have on accessibility as an issue in the committee. Because 
as we all know, all persons who have a disability know that accessibility is one of the main barriers that are preventing the participation in society on equal foot. And we know that those barriers dominantly are man-made. Not made by men, but made by mankind. And if we look into Article 9 of the UNCRPD, which is dealing with accessibility, then it is the question is how to break down those barriers. And this issue has been in the central focus of the dialogue in the committee with every state party that we have been dealing with so far. We have al always been focusing on accessibility because accessibility is a challenge in Sweden, in, in uh, Argentina, in Mexico, in Australia, in Austria, everywhere. We know that accessibility is probably one of the main factors for preventing participation in society on equal foot, which is very important to be included in society because if persons with disabilities are not seen in society, then we will never be included because then we will be some strangers in, in a remote place, remote institution, remote settlement, remote employment or whatever. So it is about being able to participate on equal foot everywhere. It is also, as you probably know, the central issue that is always being taken up when we have discussions with civil servants, with politicians at all levels, because it is so crucial to get into the movie, to get into the theatre, to get into the public building. <coughs> and accessibility is also, or should also, be a core issue when we're dealing with international cooperation, not only north, south, not only about development assistance towards developing countries, but also within the European Union or at international level. For instance, when we talk about international cooperation regarding standardization of this and that. I mean, if you are not agreeing on what expectations could we, what could we expect when we go from Finland to Denmark to Germany to Argentina? If we don't agree on that, then we will never be able to rely on accessibility in all countries. Then we will not be able to travel like everyone else. And traveling is also the core activity of everyone and persons with disabilities are actually traveling more and more and more. And that you will probably be listening a little bit to when we talk about the rights to travel of persons with disabilities. There has been a discussion about the fundamentals of accessibility in relation to the UNCRPD. It has always been discussing whether it is a human right or whether it is not a human right. And I will get back to that in a few moments. But it is a precondition 
to make it each possible for persons with disabilities to participate on equal foot. And accessibility is necessary in all spheres of society in relation to the building environment, to the outdoor environment, to information, to communication, and all kinds of transport. And it is necessary to have this focus on accessibility, because if we only talk about accessibility on the streets or on the pedestrian streets or wherever, then we will not see that it is necessary not only for persons using wheelchairs or blind using the white can, but it is also about accessibility for persons with learning disability, with all kinds of disabilities about the structure, about color, about quality of television, about this and that. And if we do not have this broad perspective, then we will lose some, some very essential dimension of accessibility and then we will <coughs> limit some persons with some kind of disability from the participation. And this means that it is not only about accessibility as an isolated <coughs> issue, but it is an, a comprehensive issue that we have to, I mean, wh what is it, what, what's the use of having access to the cinema if you cannot get from your home to the cinema because of inaccessible transport? When we look into the Article 9 of the UNCRPD, we will also see that accessibility where it is not in a way that persons with disabilities can participate on equal foot, then it is an obligation of the state party to guarantee personalized support, assistance, reasonable accommodation, so that it is possible to participate. I mean, we have today, we have sign language interpretation here, and that is something you will probably not, for many years, be able to provide without main delivered service. Not, you will not see it be delivered in, in, in electronic format or whatever, because it's probably not easy to make programs that are making sign language automatic but you will probably listen to or see sign language interpretation delivered by video in the future because we have a much higher speed on the broadband today so it's possible to provide high quality sign language person to person but perhaps not person to group yet. And because of this lack, there is a lot of barriers that are preventing our participation in society. I know I'm saying this many times, but I think it is important to realize that accessibility is probably one of the most important issues in the UNCRPD because it is so It is preventing any participation if it is not there and it is creating so much freedom, so much participation if it is there. In many countries there is a debate on whether accessibility is a human right or not whether it is a precondition, whether it is something else. 
when we see, look into the UNCRPD and read the first nine articles, they are from many state parties considered to be preconditions or cross-cutting issues or something, but, but something else than a human right. Accessibility is not looked upon as a human right. But it is from the perception of the UNCRPD committee, it is a human right and the reason why it is a human right is you have to look into several perspectives. First of all, the UNCRPD was uh, is is how should say, is is built on the human rights that are given to everyone. So it is not about giving persons with disabilities new rights but about giving persons with disabilities access to the same human rights as everyone else has. And if you go in and listen, look upon the understanding of other conventions, then you will find pieces in other conventions that are convincing at least the committee that it is a human right because you can find, for instance, in other articles, in other conventions, you will find the right to freedom of movement. The right to freedom of movement is a human right. And if you're not able to move, then you are not being given the same opportunity as everyone else to obtain this human right. Access to information and communication is a human right to be able to express the freedom, you know, to utilize the freedom to obtain the opinion and to expression. So this means that if you're not able to communicate because of barriers in society, then you are not being given the human right that you are entitled to. Access to public service or to public space for all is also a human right. So if you're not able to participate in society, if you're not able to get around, if you're not able to be visible, then you are actually being deprived of your human right. So if you go in, you will find pieces here and pieces there in the understanding of, 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 of other conventions within, conven within these conventions. And then you will see that accessibility is actually a human right. So from our perspective, it is a human right and it has to be dealt with like that. And then you will see that it, the violation of this is, in fact, a discrimination of persons with disabilities. And accessibility is, if you read the UNCRPD and go into Article 3, it is a cross-cutting principle. And that means that accessibility is not just relevant in relation to Article 9, but we are important whenever we are talking about all parts of society. It's about the ability to live independently in the, your local community. It is about employment. It is about education. It is about access to health. It is about all spheres of society, all activities, all things that are delivered to, to the persons living in the country. And it is not just something that is given to persons with citizenship, but to human beings. 
And I think that is probably quite relevant to talk about in the Scandinavian perspective, since we are becoming more and more hostile towards refugees, towards immigrants. And are tying most of the social services to the fact whether you are a citizen or not. And that is in relation to persons with disabilities, the things that are in the UNCRPD is to men or women, men or women, boys or girls with disabilities regardless of citizenship. If you want to go in and see what do we actually think about accessibility, we have the committee has decided on two general comments. The general comment is a document telling what the committee, how the committee wants you to understand the content of the article. So you will go in and you can read comment number two from the committee and then you will get more information regarding the understanding and the obligations of the Article 9 in the UNCRPD. <coughs> it is so that all committees they make general comments explaining the content and, uh, and obligation in relation to the articles that are creating, how should you say, difficulties in understanding, <coughs> difficulties in implementing. And we have made two general comments so far, one on legal capacity, the right to act and decide by yourself with personal autonomy, and then one on accessibility. I don't think that we are finished with information regarding the understanding of Article 9, but we have taken a major step forward by deciding on this general comment. In this general comment, you will also read something about the history, because it is not so that you can just take something out of its historic or society uh, connections or whatever. You have to look into this from the perspective of, I mean, accessibility and the demands to the state party is not necessarily the same in Argentina, in Mexico, as it is in Finland or Denmark. When we draw up a general comment, we look in and see what have we been talking about so far? What have we recommended to other countries? What kind of understanding have we put into the issue on accessibility? And then we try to write it into, we use more words, we use more examples, and then by that we will pro provide information regarding how to understand and implement the UNCRPD. One thing that is interesting or relevant to talk about is that we are not, when we are talking about accessibility, we are not just talking about the future, but we are also talking about the past. So this means that we are also talking about the existing building environment, the existing means of transport, the existing means of communication, and the ex 
and this and that. So, we are also talking about historic buildings and monuments. So it is also about having access to the history. But probably, probably not to the same extent as those things that we are going to see established in the future. Because it is always a question of accessibility, renovation and burden. Is it burdenful for the society to change, to make changes financially, historical, cultural? But when we're talking about the future, there is no excuse for not making things accessible. That is the clear opinion of the UNCRPD committee. When we're talking about the core challenges of accessibility, we can see that there is a lack of accessibility in all spheres and everywhere, regardless whether we are talking about the past, the present, and unfortunately, the future. We do not see things established to the level necessary. There is also a lack of national and international recognized binding regulations and standards. We do not have an international standard which is recognized and binding for all state parties concerning accessibility to the physical environment. We do have an international standard, but no country has yet taken it into the domestic legislation and made it to a reality when we are building houses, cinemas, theatres, hospitals, schools or whatever. And even that international standard does not cover the more how you structure your building so it is possible for persons with brain injury or with intellectual disabilities, cognitive disabilities, to find their way inside those buildings. Even this building, if, if a person who had a cognitive disability, they might get lost. Because there is, this, the way that you are shown where to go is domain dominantly presented in words and not in signs. There is also a lack of political willingness to find necessary resources to combat barriers of, to combat barriers of accessibility. We do not yet provide housing that are accessible we do not provide the possibility for persons with disabilities to visit others, regardless of where they live. We do go out into the cities and we find obstacles that should not be there and which should be taken away. There is a lack of efficient monitoring mechanisms and we do not actually know how is the level of accessibility because we do not have sufficient and reliable data on which kind of our society is actually accessible. And we do not have realistic and implementable plan of actions on gradually breaking down barriers of accessibility and not creating new ones. 
We have some plants in some countries, but we do not have plants that are covering all the necessary elements of so participation in society. And there is a lack of recognition of accessibility as a cross-cutting and interdependent human rights issue. We do not see things in connection. We do not see how it is important for persons. I mean, we can build a house and we can provide personal care or personal assistance, but we do not provide accessible transport so it is possible to get out of your house and to where you want to go. Especially not when we get to the more rural areas of a society. And there is also a clear lack of inclusion of persons with disabilities themselves through their representative organizations in planning how to break down barriers of accessibility. And if you go into Article 4, 3 of the UNCRPD, you will see that it is actually required to involve persons with disabilities in planning, in deciding regarding persons with disabilities themselves. So if we do not have a strong involvement of persons with disabilities, we lose this high quality, high quality input. The obligations of the state party. I've already said a few of the things, but I'll just go in and say a little bit more. It's an obligation for state parties to assess the challenges of breaking down barriers of accessibility and take the necessary steps. It's an obligation for state parties to decide on plans of action with concrete short-term, mid-term and long-term perspectives or measure, measurable targets. It's an obligation to decide on the necessary legislation, standardization, make the available resources or make resources available to monitor and to enforce legislation. So if we are not having legislation, regulations that are enforced, then it is worth very little. And it does also include the right for remedies to make, a, to make persons with disabilities able to complain or to make their case so that they can challenge those that are deciding to put up barriers instead of removing them. It is also the obligation of the state party to find a way to make sure that it is included in your legislation. It is, you have, we have to find a way to deal with this in our legislation. And we do not yet see accessibility included in all spheres of international cooperation, not within the European Union, not within the UN, and not in our North-South collaboration. Accessibility should be included there as well. And we do not see sufficient delivery of personalized services to persons with disabilities 
to overcome barriers in form of reasonable accommodation. You will not be able to get sign language interpretation to the level that is necessary. You will not be able to get personal assistance to the level which is necessary to participate spontaneously and in all parts of society decided by yourself. I'll give you two examples of how we are giving advice to state parties after having a dialogue <coughs> in Geneva. And we are having, I'll take two examples here, one from Austria and one from Australia. And if you go in, you will find that Denmark got some similar suggestions for action. And the one from Australia is that the committee recommends that sufficient resources be allocated to ensure monitoring and implementation of the disability standards and requirements. And this was because we found that in Australia they had disability standards and they had requirements, but they were not taking they, mean, they were not making sure that they were implemented and that they were followed by those that were building. And in relation to Austria, we said that the committee recommends that the state party develop an overarching inclusive, and pro inclusive approach to accessibility in accordance with Article 9 of the UNCRPD. The building standards should not be limited to building of a minimum size or capacity, but should apply to all public facilities in accordance with Article 9. The committee also recommends decreasing the timeline of stat stage plants currently operate in some cities and builders and also the plans for subtitling ORF programs. So you can see that we are actually going in and making it quite clear to the state party that what does the committee recommend the state party to do. We do not have any possibility to go in and say to the state party that you should do it, but we can only recommend them to do something and then we need to be very specific. We need to find something that is realistic to Mexico and we're going to find something that will become realistic to Finland when we will have the first dialogue with Finland when you have decided to ratify it, which I of course hope that you will do very soon. We also have one, two more. That is the petitions or the complaints. And Sweden was actually the first country that we had a complaint where we were dealing with a complaint from Sweden. I mean, you can find any country, Denmark, Germany, Australia, you will find violations of the rights of persons with disabilities everywhere. But in the Swedish case, we decided that they were violating the rights of the person who were complaining. They were violating it because they had some standard regulation and they did not take into consideration the special needs of this woman. She needed some special treatment at her home and she needed to extend or to build another room into her house. And in that area, 
it was not possible to build out with 40 square meters, only 25 or something. And then they said no for letting her having the ability to, to put in some health treatment facilities and then it was not possible for her to have access to that kind of help. And they said that the plan designed for this area does only allow for houses of this size. And then they said no. And there the committee goes in and says, it is not reasonable for this woman not to be allowed to have extra space for 40 square meters because it does not put a burden on the shoulders of anyone else to provide this to this lady. So and a decision toward Sweden is also a way to understand how to deal with local regulation in Finland or Denmark. So you can go in and you can see that what we are saying in towards Australia, towards Austria, towards Denmark is also applicable to Finland. So we don't have to decide on everything for every country, but we have to go in to see how are the jurisdictional background or tradition. In the case of Hungary, it was the case against a bank. It could be a Scandinavian bank, but this was in Hungary. And they were forced, or not forced, because we cannot force, but they were we told them that they should have a plan of action for installing automatic cash machines that were to be able to be used by persons with visually impairment. You can buy such a machine without extra costs. So you are violating the rights of persons with disabilities if you are not installing cash machines in the banks that can be used by everyone. So, when we say this towards Hungary, it is also applicable to Finland. So I would urge you to go in and study those decisions because there you will find the arguments and the, those arguments can also be used in relation to Finland. Here I have three recommendations for going in to get more information. You will find the website of the committee itself. You will find the website of the UN in New York and you will find the website of the International Disability Alliance where you will actually find a compilation of what we have been saying in relation to Article 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and upwards. And there you will get a lot of information on how is it to be understood in relation to Finland. And now I will leave the floor to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.